Hi church, so maybe you can relate with one blogger who uh, once stated in one of their blog posts, my prayer life is nothing short of a roller coaster. And I like to think it's not a bad thing. Some days I scribble pages and pages of impassioned prayers into a journal until my wrist cramps. But other days, my prayer time feels like a metaphysical equivalent of throwing a dead fish at God's feet and then walking away. But I've noticed that when my prayers feel flimsy, it's because they're not grounded in God's promises. So can you relate to that roller coaster feeling of a prayer life? Some days it's good, some days it's bad, some weeks it's good, some weeks it's bad. Maybe it's even longer stretches than that. Last week, Zach asked us what what gets in the way of us praying as often as we would like, and I'm sure there were lots of different answers for all of us. For some, it might have been just uh, a matter of not making it a priority, not thinking about it. For others, it might have been a matter of time, not being able to find the time or not really making the time for it. For others, it might have just simply been a real struggle with whether or not prayer actually matters. And I know for some, it might have come down to just the language of prayer, not not sure how to pray, not sure what to say when you pray, really wrestling with the language of prayer. So today my message is really simple. It's going to be this. If you really struggle with the language of prayer, if you struggle with knowing what to say in prayer, consider praying scripture. Maybe more specifically, consider praying the promises that are found in scripture. So Mark Batterson wrote a book called The Circle Maker, and he encourages this kind of praying in our lives. And he says this in his book, he says, what I'm about to share has the power to revolutionize the way you pray and the way you read the Bible. We often view prayer and scripture reading as two distinct spiritual disciplines without much overlap. But what if they were meant to be hyperlinked? What if reading became a form of praying and praying became a form of reading? So praying scripture is not a new idea. It's actually an an ancient tradition of Christianity. And a lot of um, Christians today are rediscovering this ancient practice. And and I want to tell you kind of up front that in all honesty, this is not a strength in my life. It really isn't. Um, I, I wish to do it more. I want to do more of this, but it's not really been a strength in my life. Now, Taylor Penrod, on the other hand, this has been something that she's really adopted in her prayer life, and it's really become important to her. And in full transparency, many of uh, the the things that I'll be sharing in this sermon come from Taylor, and uh, Taylor's actually preaching this sermon Uh, in our instrumental option of our online worship experience. So uh, feel free, if you want to, to stop this video and go to the instrumental portion and watch uh, her preach the sermon there, because I imagine it will be better um, than what I'm going to be doing. But she has this great practice of, one, she loves to pray um, sort of on location. What I mean by that is uh, she likes to pray um, in the places of the places she's praying for. And so she's praying for a particular family that she knows of that's struggling going through something. She likes to go um, and be close to them, whether it's on the street that they live on or in front of their house or in the neighbor. She likes to go and be um, close to them as she prays uh, over them. If there's an event that's coming up or if she knows of a neighborhood that's really struggling, she loves to go and be in those places and pray um, over over those places. And she and I have been talking about this and, and working through the sermon. And, and she talked about how she confessed that sometimes she struggles to know what to pray. She struggles with the right words to pray. And so what she has adopted in her life is this practice of praying scripture in those places. And more specifically, um, praying the promises of scripture. 
And so a lot of times what she'll do is when she goes to those locations, when she goes uh, to a neighborhood or uh, to if it's here at the church building or um, if it's at the park or wherever she's going to pray over a particular situation, a lot of times she'll take some sidewalk chalk with her and she will write a scripture reference or maybe uh, even write out the actual scripture itself, the promise that's found in that scripture, and she'll write it on the sidewalk and then she'll just pray it over and over and over again. And she calls it this holy union between scripture and prayer. And I like that. A holy union between scripture and prayer. Okay, so what are uh, some examples of promises that are found in Scripture that we can pray. Well, let me just share just a handful of them. There's a lot of them, but I just want to quickly, just to kind of give you an example, I want to share with you uh, four different ones that, that I thought of. John 14 and verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That promise of peace. Isaiah 58 and verse 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fail. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Micah 4, one of my personal favorites, He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. So those are just a few of the promises, just a few examples of promises in Scripture that we can pray. And I guess the question is, why would we do this? Why um, pray Scripture instead of praying our own prayers? And first, let me say, I'm not encouraging anyone not to pray their own prayers, right? God wants to hear us. I believe that God wants to hear our hearts um, he wants us to share openly with him. So I'm not discouraging anyone from, not, from, from praying their own prayers. I'm just suggesting that praying scripture may be another practice uh, that we would like to adopt, that maybe we should adopt. And so why? Why would we do this? And I, I thought uh, Taylor and I both came up with kind of three reasons um, why we should do this. First, when we pray the promises of scripture, we are saying amen to God's words, not our own words. Let me explain what I mean by that. Growing up, I always thought that amen was just the way you ended a prayer, right? A prayer was not an official prayer, and it was not officially ended until you said amen. That's just the way you closed out a prayer, because amen was meant to close out a prayer. I remember as a child, I would uh, lie in my bed at night and, and say my prayers and, and maybe fall asleep before I finished my prayers. And there were times, I can remember these moments vividly, there were times where I'd wake up sort of in the middle of the night, kind of in a panic, because I realized I did not say amen and close out the prayer. And all I would do is just say, in Jesus' name, amen. And that gave me this sense of peace and calm, and I would immediately go back to sleep because in my mind, saying amen was the way that you officially ended the prayer. Let me say, amen is not an official ending to a prayer. Amen does not mean this prayer is over. It's a way of actually saying, let these words be true, or let these words come to pass, or maybe even saying, these words are Truth. This is why whenever um, a speaker says something powerful or uh, very meaningful, you'll hear people say, Amen, out loud. Because what they're saying is, that statement is basically saying, that is truth. Those words are truth. And so when we say, Amen, we're not just officially closing out a prayer. We are saying, these words are truth, or let these words become true. And so when we when we pray the promises of Scripture, when we uh, verbalize 
the promises that God gives us in Scripture, when we verbalize those in prayer and then we say amen to them, we are actually laying claim to those prayers. We're laying claim to those promises that are found in Scripture. And when we amen those promises that are found in Scripture, we are taking those promises as our own, right? They, they, they move from just being promises given a long time ago to the Israelites or a long time ago to the early church, and now they have become our promises because we are laying claim to those. And when we stand, uh, when we say amen, we are standing on those promises, and so um, one of the reasons I think it's important to, to pray those promises, to pray scripture, is because we're amening. We're saying these words are truth. We're laying claim to those promises as our own promises. A second reason that I think it's uh, a really cool practice to get into of praying scripture is because scripture, um, scripture just seems to dream bigger than we can dream on our own. Right? The vision that scripture gives is so much bigger than our own vision. It's so much bigger than we are capable of imagining. Right? It's hard to imagine a world with no war. Yet scripture takes us there. Scripture invites us into that vision to believe in a place and a time where there'll be no more war. It's really hard to imagine a place of perfect peace where there is no fear and nothing to be anxious about. But Scripture gives us that vision. Scripture invites us into that place when it's hard for us to imagine that because it's so much our reality. Scripture gives us a bigger vision. It's hard to imagine a world where all nations and all tribes and all people and all languages can come together and give praise to God in one voice. With all the, the racism that's going on in our world, it's hard to imagine that scene. But Scripture invites us into that vision. Scripture dreams bigger than we can dream. And right now, if you think about it, in August 2020, it's hard to imagine a world without COVID-19. It's hard to imagine a world where people are not getting sick and dying. But Scripture actually invites us into this vision. Scripture dreams bigger than we can dream. And so in like Revelation 21, 4, we hear there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. My experience, and maybe this is your experience too, my experience has been that the older we get and the more that we experience in life and the more suffering that we see in life, the smaller our imaginations get. Have you found that to be true? A child's imagination is so much bigger um, and, and so much more exciting than most adults' imagination. And so quoting again from Mark Batterson in his book, The Circle Maker, he says, Imagination is the road less taken, but it is the pathway to prayer. Prayer and imagination are directly proportional. The more you pray, the bigger your imagination becomes because the Holy Spirit supersizes with God-sized dreams. One litmus test of spiritual maturity is whether your dreams are getting bigger or smaller. See, when we pray the promises of Scripture, we are not limited by our own imaginations. We're not limited by our own capabilities to envision something, but rather our faith in these promises opens us up to a whole new set of possibilities in this world. And so, one, we, we pray Scripture, we, we should get in this practice of this because we say, Amen to the words of God and to the promises of God, and we lay claim to those promises. Another reason is because Scripture just seems to dream bigger than we can dream. And then a third reason that I think it's important that we pray Scripture or get in this habit of doing this is because uh, when we do this, the words of God become a part of us in a way that just simple reading and study doesn't happen. It reminds me of the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. 
So Ezekiel, um, God comes to him and has a message that he wants Ezekiel to pass on to uh, the nation of Israel. Um, but before he gives him this, this message to pass on to Israel, um, he has something he wants him to do. He doesn't just want him to memorize the words. He wants him to do more than just memorize. And so in Ezekiel 3, it says, He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go. Speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, mortal, eat the scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. And then he said to me, mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. So a few weeks ago I was invited to uh, participate in one of our life groups. Uh, They were meeting out in the park and were sharing communion. They asked me to come out and talk a little bit about communion. And this is the passage that I went to um, here in Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel eating the words of God. Uh, And I I talked about it there because of this idea that you are what you eat, right? You are what you eat. And and, and there it was, we, we applied it to the idea of communion, taking in the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. We are what we eat, but also it's something about consuming the words of God. Right? You are what you eat. When we pray the promises of Scripture, those words become a part of us. When we consume the, the, the words of God in prayer, we do so that, so that we can be transformed by the very thing that we are consuming. And so we consume the words of God in prayer. We, we, we take those words and those words of promise and we, we consume them and we pray them so that they can become a part of us in a way that just simple reading and, you know, a, a study and dissection of the scripture, it doesn't really become a part of us in the same way as praying those prayers and claiming those scriptures as our own. And so I, I think we do it so that we can give an amen to the words of God and we can lay claim to those promises. We, we should practice praying scripture so that um, we can have a vision that is bigger than our own, an imagination that is bigger than our own, and scripture does that. And then also, because it's a way of consuming the words of God, and you are what you eat. Let me, let me close our time this morning by reading about um, the promises of God uh, from a passage in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-4. through 4. There Peter says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. And we have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. God has given us everything we need to live the godly life he calls us to live. Do you believe that, church? Do you believe that? God has also given us great and marvelous promises. Stand on those promises. Lay claim to those promises. Make those promises yours and say amen to them. And then finally, the part of that passage that always, always blows my mind. These promises that God gives us enables us, listen to this church, they enable us to share in his divine nature. They enable us to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption. I don't even know what to say about that other than just to let it sit there. God's promises enable us to share in his divine nature. 
So this week, what I want to do is I want to encourage you to find a promise of God in Scripture. And every day this week, pray that promise. Give an amen to that promise. Lay claim to it as your own. Let that promise give you a vision bigger than your own. And consume that promise. Consume those words of God so that it can transform you because we are what we eat. Find a promise of God and pray that promise every day this week.